Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So today we're doing another video in bonding and molecular structures. So let's get started. Bam! Today we're doing the resonance structures for boron trifluoride. So you first need to get the formula for boron trifluoride, and there it is right there. You're going to look on your periodic table, get three valence electrons for boron. There's one of those. There are seven valence electrons for fluorine. There's three of those. You're going to multiply the three and the seven, add the three for the boron, sum those up, divide by two, and get the total number of pairs of electrons. The least electronegative element goes in the middle, and the fluorines surround that boron. Okay, then you're going to place those electrons around the central element in between the central element and the outside element to find bonding pairs. Then lone pairs of electrons around the outside element. And then after that, you're going to verify the octet rule for boron and for fluorine. And you're going to have to have a double bond. So that is the structure in which you should have right there. So you would have two more structures just like that. Remember the nitrate ion? There was a double bond and we rotated that into two different locations beyond the first one that we did draw. Okay, there's another resonance structure that we actually had prior to making this one and it was right here. That was a singly bonded fluorine. All the fluorines were singly bonded before we moved that lone pair of electrons in there. Okay, so these two structures are non-equivalent resonance structures. So, how do you distinguish between two or more non-equivalent resonance structures? Well, the answer is formal charge. So you probably want to review that video on formal charge, but here it is in an applied sense. Okay, so we're going to calculate the formal charge of every element that you see in each of the formulas. First, we need to get the formula for formal charge in the determining that number. And here it is right here. So the formal charge is the valence electrons for that element minus one half the bonding minus the lone electrons on that element. So let's look at that left-hand Lewis dot structure. Boron has three valence electrons and there are one half of the four bonding regions. So that would give a formal charge of plus one. Now, if you recall the rules, and that is the rules are that all elements would prefer a formal charge of zero. The most electronegative element prefers a formal charge that is negative, correspond to it being highly electronegative. Okay, all right. So, plus one for boron, ah, it might not matter. Let's find out and let's continue. This top left-hand fluorine has a formal charge of zero. That is seven valence electrons minus the one half of the bonding electrons. So that's two times one half, right? Minus the one, two, three, four, five, six electrons on the lone pair, lone electrons outside. And that's a total of formal charge of zero. We're going to get that upper one. And that is also a formal charge of zero. Now that bottom fluorine that's doubly bonded, that is seven valence electrons minus four, minus four. And well, that should be positive one. Okay, so you're going to think to yourself, hmm, formal charge of positive one, is that a good thing or a bad thing? That is not a good thing because fluorine is very electronegative. And if fluorine is electronegative, it certainly doesn't want a positive formal charge. So let's determine the formal charge of the other right-hand Lewis dot structure. We got a formal charge on that upper left-hand fluorine at zero and the right-hand fluorine of zero, the lower fluorine at zero and the boron at a zero. So this one is the preferred, the dominant resonance structure. And that is, this is why. This is the reason why halogens, fluorine is a halogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine are all halogens. This is why halogens do not double bond. It's because the formal charge prohibits double bonding. That is, um, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine are very electronegative and they want to draw electrons towards themselves. 
Certainly they don't want to take lone pairs of electrons and share them with some other element. That would be a bad thing. Sharing is not caring for halogens because they don't like to share because they are very negative. They are very electronegative. And this is why they only single bond and that is it, especially when they are on the outside. Okay? It doesn't matter which of these three structures you took a look at, but they are, or sorry, these two structures, there's three more of the one on the left. It doesn't matter which one of these you look at, but they're all AX3. That is three bonding, zero non-bonding. That's trigonal planar bond angles of 120. And this molecule is non-polar. Even though it has polar bonds, it is symmetrical. In fact, we already did this one before. Okay, the bond order here, if we look at the preferred dominant resonance structure, the number of bonds is three, the number of regions is three. So we're gonna get a bond order of one and that corresponds to single bonds for boron trifluoride. That is absolutely perfect. Alrighty, well, I hope that this was fantastic for you. I am the Crazy Hat Chemist and wait, I got one more thing here for you. Okay, if you like that video, give me a thumbs up. And instead of a crazy hat, someone said, do something different this time, Mr. Maubriand. Wait for this. Do you recognize me now? If you don't recognize me now, give me a thumbs up on that video. If you do recognize me now, give me a thumbs up on that video. Either way, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I will see you next time. Is it Mr. Maubriand or someone else?